Everybody was buy bitcoin bitcoin's really good alexa don't start sassing me girl stop damn woman don't listen all right um rick you should buy bitcoin it's a 60 grand it's gonna go to 100 you should buy it yeah i'm really sad i didn't drop 60 grand on a freaking bitcoin uh now if i'd have bought it when it was 10 and 15 dollars i'd be happy so, uh, you know, it's funny when Bitcoin was at 60 and everybody was telling me I should buy it and it was going up. None of those people are here now. Do I have anybody here that's like they got rich on Bitcoin and they want me to buy it and they're still recommending buy? OK. I ain't buying no freaking coin made on a computer because somebody says we're going to stop making them when we make this many and they have no value. They never make more land. That's for damn sure. Okay, so here's pretty big news. Damn, Alex Jones got spanked. I'm drinking Jack and Coke, but I only made me like a double, and that's it. I haven't had any before. Last time I had a couple before, I was on my second one. Then I drank three or four. Then I got to more. I've got two, and I've only had one Jack and Coke since the last life. I think it was Wednesday. I was like, nah, I'll have one about nine or ten. I said I'll just have one to wind down, but. So this is only my second Jack and Coke since the last live. Ah, and it's pretty damn good. So Alex Schoen got spanked bad. Uh, I haven't watched the trial. I'm assuming it was a defamation or a character assassination, pain and suffering. What is it? Texas jury, conspiracy theorists, acts of joke, conspiracy theorists. Yeah, let's just. Let's just say the guy don't know what he's talking. He's been right more than he's been wrong, but he's a conspiracy theorist. 45.2 million in punitive damages. By adding to the 4.1 million, he must pay for suffering that he claimed. Man, they spanked him. A total of $49 million he's got to pay. Are you kidding me? Now, I know a lot of people are going to say this is free speech. Remember, free speech says the government shall not infringe on your speech, even though they do. But that's what free speech protection is. It is not free speech for other people. If you harm somebody with your free speech and they can prove that it was liable, uh, then, then you're responsible. He got screwed, man. I kind of like him. I, I really wish somebody would send me a clip of him going off. Somebody said he started yelling and almost jumped out of the witness stand on the defense attorney. I don't have time to go watch the trial and look at it, but I would love to see that video clip. If somebody's got it, post it in the comments after this video post. 421 people.
thanks for coming. Saturday night. Ain't no telling where the hell is to go. Uh, fine for his opinion. Well, now wait a minute. If I run around and say your wife's a whore and I post all this shit and I defame your wife and now your kids have to go to school crying and people are pissed off because I'm calling their mom a whore and doing all this bullshit, you're saying that's free speech? If, if I start saying that you're a child molester, in my opinion, you're a child molester and I start posting that and you get fired from your job and people firebomb your house and people are attacking you. Is that my opinion that I can do that? See, freedom isn't easy. Freedom is hard. Tyranny is easy. So all these problems that people want to seize freedoms to make it seem like we can fix it, that's not the purpose of freedom. Freedom is hard. And, and when it comes down to it, if I got to choose between freedom and somebody's hurt feelings, I'm choosing freedom every time. All right. Uh, the judge was a flaming liberal. Well, go figure. Um, oh, was it liable? Is what he got for it? Liable. Is that spoken words? And what is it? Liable and uh, defamation. Is defamation written in libels verbal? I can't remember. One's, one's written and one's verbal. Uh, so I don't know if he got both or whatever. It is free speech if it's true. Well, obviously, if it was true, he could have proved it and he wouldn't own a damn penny. The only reason that he is paying is because it's not true. Any of you people that still think it's still a conspiracy and it's all bullshit, it was a joke, they won't sue you because they can't get money out of you. He's got money, so they sued him. So, but... I mean, I get this all the time when I do these videos from viewers that I kind of think are usually pretty reasonable. They're like, it's fake. You're being fooled. You're a dummy. I can't believe you fell for it. This is wrong. A plane really didn't hit the tower. 9-11 was a scam. I mean, there's some problems with 9-11. The third building, the freaking Pentagon, they're holding out 22 camera views that we can't see, and they're only allowing us one shitty camera view. There's some problems with 9-11. But I think people hijacked freaking planes and killed a lot of people and hit the freaking towers and the towers came down. Now, everyone else can tell me that I'm a fool and I'm just, I'm making this shit up, but whatever. Building seven, that's the one that came down. It looked like it was a demolition. I mean, there was, it looked like there was controlled explosives and it fell pretty straight. I got to admit, it looks fishy. I don't bet. Hi, Lee. Or Lee, sorry. Uh, don't get us started. Uh... Where we at here? <laughs> Rick drinking that. I'm drinking a little uh, Texas tea. This is some Texas tea. Black gold. See, the earth is flat is not liable unless the earth gets pissed off and says you're telling a lie about it. So that's not, you can't get sued for saying the earth is flat, even though it may be false or true. Now, if you say the earth is flat, and because of that, all Fords suck or whatever. Now you could be getting into problems. But um, people confuse a lot. Um, let's see here. What's up, Rick? Cash pot. Hey, gun people. Looking good, Rick. Paisley Law. Paisley Law. Is that a law firm? Uh, can you see a judicial branch as a whole? No, unfortunately, the federal government is pretty much exempt from lawsuits, although every once in a while they pay out and they give the pesky citizen a bone to chew on. But if the government wants to say screw you, they can. Uh, slander is spoken. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, this is my uh, get on the FBI watch list hat. So uh, three percenters. OK, FBI, in case you're watching, put this video on your little list, you little commie pieces of shit. I saw people making jokes about freaking uh, me saying the F word. I hope I prove you wrong. Maybe when I finish this, I'll slip up. But for right now, whatever. Libel is speech. I think slander is speech too. I don't know if... Um, oh, the F-B-I. Gives me chicken skin just thinking about it. Please grow your sash back. I am. Y'all can't tell I'm, I, I, I shaved, 
but I didn't show my goat my stash. It's coming in back by popular demand. My stash and goat is coming back. All righty. Uh, let's see where we're at here. Who knows where this thing's going to go tonight? You guys can take it where Rick doesn't drink any more or less. Who was the guy that made a comment? I've got a strict policy about drinking. I only drink alone or with other people. I'm like, <laughs> I like that philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> we love your hairy face. Even when I grow a beard, it's not really hairy. I mean, I, I don't, I don't like the big, fluffy, grizzly Adams. I want to be an operator in Afghanistan and look like the freaking, uh, who gives a shit stand people. Um, Rick, sleep with your AR. I've always got something in reach. Hey, you big dummies! Wow, wow, what's up with that? I got a mustache question, but I'll shave it for later. <laughs> All right. So my little gun people are making jokes here. Oh, cats tried to get me to read it. F B. -I oh, that's what he's saying. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I thought you were tricking me into saying the F word, but you put a little B in an I there. Nice. I like it. <laughs> Do you feel your Adam's apple when you talk? Do I feel it? Like, if I touch it, I feel it. Do I feel it now? No. Why? My voice was coming back today. I did a couple videos. I forgot what videos I did today, but... uh. Oh, I think I did that, that knife video. Man, how about that video? We should talk about that, little boy. Everybody have a drink. Every time I say FBI, you have to take a drink, all right? So the, the FBI, oops, is the drink word. And the safe word tonight is walnut, okay? Walnut! That's the safe word. If anybody feels threatened. Uh, only a man can fill his Adam's apple. Really? I think someone else could fill it. If somebody else put their hand on my throat. The knife dude, man, he was... His shit was badass. Where is he? Did I pull him up? I've got a few videos that I wanted to cover. Uh, all right, so I already colored Alex. He got screwed. I think it's bullshit. I kind of agree that he should be able to say it. But if he offends somebody and they want to sue him and he, and he can't prove that what he's saying, that he's claiming is true, and it caused somebody pain, I mean, that's where our court system is. Uh Walnut Connor Allen. <laughs> All those sound like really good pies. <laughs> Show Judy. Judy's over here. Where is Judy? I got to go full screen. See Judy? She's right here. She, she's rocking her little 45 Gatlin gun. You go, girl, with her little pea shooters on the side, with her little tight shorts. They have to be tight to hold her guns on the side, you know, and, and other things. Judy booty making her call. All right. Rick is not blurry. Is somebody saying I'm blurry again? Are you kidding me? I focused in on Judy because we're about the same distance thinking I would be focused. Tommy gun. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Judy's packing. She's packing not only heat, but she's packing a few other things. Judy's packing a lot of stuff. Okay. Uh, what's moon floss? I don't know what that means. I don't know what moon floss means. Am I like the only one that doesn't know that? Oh, somebody tried to get me to say the F word. Nice try, Jeff. Didn't work, did it? Nice guns. Yeah. She got nice little owls, too. You ain't blurry. Thank you. He's blurry. Oh, shit. You guys are killing me. <laughs> if I'm blurry, maybe you're drinking too much. F-B-I. Ooh. All right. Uh, Judy works at Hooters. <laughs> Judy looks a whole hell of a lot better than a lot of women I've seen at Hooters. Let me tell you that. I walk in Hooters sometime. I'm like, what the hell? They just grab people off the street and shove freaking balloons in their bra and say they work at Hooters? All right. Big booty Judy, not blurry. Okay, good. Not blurry. All right. 
Never mind. I have my quality at 420. Oh, you know what? I think I did change my quality. Hang on. Okay, so now I'm at uh, high definition on my camera. I don't know if that changes for you guys. It's a Tammy gun for her <laughs> instead of a Tommy gun. <laughs> so I want to talk about Taiwan too. Shit. Let me cover Taiwan real quick. You got the, you got freaking Pelosi's dumbass running around saying, screw the president, screw the party, screw the military leaders, screw everybody. I'm going to Taiwan. I'm going to piss them off. Taiwan has now cut off all communications. They put a freaking ex party, basically restraining order on Pelosi saying she don't get shit from China. I mean, I don't know if they blocked her freaking Amazon account. She can't even order shit that's made in China now because they put her on her hit list. And, and now you got China firing missiles over Taiwan in a show of force and a threat. And if one of those are miscalculated and it hits a U.S. vessel, which is on the other side of Taiwan, we're in deep shit. I mean, this thing, I, when, anytime I was in a military, when this shit happens, it sucks. Because everybody goes on alert. Everybody gets spun up. All the planes, we're moving munitions, we're loading up, we're getting our shit. I was on a 20, a 44 man deployment team anywhere in the world, in 24 hours. So then we'd all get worked up and we'd be on standby and couldn't drink. And, you know, days and days of just waiting for something to happen. And, you know, we're watching the news. We're like, oh shit. In the meantime, we're still freaking working. This is just a shitty situation. People that don't understand how, how volatile you have two opposing nuclear powers in the same area, threatening and flexing, you know, it, it's like, Two, two boxers meeting before the match. They're going to start talking shit. And next thing you know, blows are going to start firing before the boxing match even starts. And that's what's happening right now with China and the U.S. around Taiwan. That is not a good situation. Now, most people think it's going to blow over. China's talking shit. Eh, if and buts, coconuts. I don't know. But it, it, it's not an ideal situation by any means. Uh, Judy's prepared. Uh, USA maybe can handle China and Russia one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, to be honest, I think we could probably take them both if we had somebody in charge. you got to remember the top three people in charge of this country is Biden, who can't remember his own damn name, Pelosi, who's a freaking idiot, 80-something, buys $600 ice cream while everyone else is fucking... Shit! Damn, FBI. She's buying all this shit in her refrigerator... And pissing people off. Meanwhile, prices are up. Gasoline's up. You know, COVID's coming around. Now we got monkeypox. Everybody's going to catch monkeypox. This is my new term for you guys who are watching. When I say that guy's a good candidate to uh, catch monkeypox, I mean he's a little light in his shorts and um, he probably wears pink underwear. So that's my new code word until YouTube picks it up. So now instead of saying one of the 1,800 words that YouTube doesn't allow because it might offend somebody, when you hear me say uh, he looks like he's a good candidate to catch monkeypox, you know what I mean. Okay? All right. Freaking Pelosi, that piece of shit, freaking commie, damn woman. <laughs> Taiwan shall be scared of borders. All right. Everybody's laughing because I got freaking caught. Damn, woman. It's always women that get me to freaking screw up. Damn women. Just piss Rick off and let it rip. <laughs> lightning loafers. So lightning loafers mean. Uh, oh, shit. This is my old partner, Joey, texting me. So he works. Let's just say he works in the Sacramento area. So that video that I was going to do where the homeless dude with a tarp and he came up on the cops. And they end up shooting him because he moved. And then he ran off and goes, I don't even have a gun. And he's crying. And I, I kind of, I think I showed a short clip of it. He wants me to watch it, which tells me that he probably doesn't agree with it. And then he wants me to call him. And I told him I was about to do my live, so I'd call him afterwards. So I'm going to call Joey V. I've got a lot of crazy cop stories with him. We worked the gang task force together. We worked the FBI task force together. Uh, what else? We worked the gang injunction together. Um uh, he helped me on a gun grant when I was working gun grant violence. So uh, 
me and him know each other pretty well. Um, so he's got a lot of dirt on me. Unfortunately, I get to tell my dirt on him. He doesn't have a channel, so he can't tell the dirt on me. And when I say dirt, I'm not talking about crooked illegal shit. I'm talking about stories and shit that I screwed up or, you know, I almost got him killed and he blamed me and I blamed him or whatever. That's what I'm talking about. Dirt. Neither one of us were dirty. We didn't do any of that shit. We didn't play that shit. We, we went after bad guys. So, uh, all right. Rick put a sticky on front. No F bomb. Yeah. You know what? When that thing comes out though, it just, I don't, if I thought I wouldn't say it when it comes out, I'm not freaking thinking that's the problem with that little word, little piece of shit. What ethnicity is Joey, Joey Villanueva, Joey V. What ethnicity do you think he is? Freaking taco eating crazy little hot beaner. Oh, I don't know if I can say that. That's what I used to call. It. Anyway, he's a good dude. <laughs> His wife is uh from Fiji and she's a little sweetheart too. Anyway, he keeps texting me. Hopefully he's not watching this saying, dude, why are you talking about my wife? <laughs> no worries. We can talk next week. Working graves. Oh, he says, hey, gun people. He's been watching some of my crazy gun stories. He calls me and goes, dude, you were lying on that. Were you blaming me? It was your fault. Okay. I leave in three years. Oh, he's going to retire in three years at 12 grand a month. You go, boy. So he's going to say in three more years in retirement to be 12 grand a month. I'm sharing all this shit. People be, his wife will be pissed. She's a little firecracker. She's kind of all into the money thing. <laughs> If, if she knew that he told me that and I put it on here, she would freaking have his ass. Anybody that knows Joey, call his wife. <laughs> oh, did I say FBI and forgot to take a drink? Sorry. Ah, all righty. All right. So uh, I don't know what the hell we were talking about. Uh, where was I? Somebody get me back on track. I lost track with the freaking FBI. Ooh. Ah, uh, yeah. See, he's working. He's making 12K a month because he's working. He started when he was like 17 or not 17, 21 in the cop field. So when he retires at 30%, you get 90% of your salary. I left after about 14 or 15 years. So I only got, I can't remember what percentage I got. If you go two point, I got two and a half percent per year. So two and a half per my 15 years, I got 30, 45%, something like that. So I don't get near that. If you'll think I'm making that kind of money, I don't believe me. I don't even make half that. <laughs> so he, he's going to do good. And it goes by a lot of it on how much you made in your last two or three years. So like he's doing, he's working overtime grave. So, you know, he may only make 130 grand a year, but with his overtime, he's making 220. So if he can make 220 a year for the next three years, his retirement goes way up. Because they base your retirement on your last three highest years of learning. That's how the California uh, system works. F the blue line. Uh, I think most of y'all would like Joey. He's probably a little more pro cop than I am. Uh, I was actually against the gang injunction because I thought it gave cops away because it was against Mexican gangs, the Norteños and Sereños. And when you put a gang injunction on a community, you basically take away their right to privacy. It basically is a court order that says cops don't have to have probable cause to contact you or search you if they believe that you're involved in a gang. And that's just too much freaking power. I thought it was bullshit. I didn't like it. And uh, he was like, I like it. He was working gangs. He was all into it. He wanted to go bust on them. You know, we drive around and I'd see these freaking cops in uniform Having these kids that are 13 or 14, they're not in a gang. They're walking home from school and they got them proned out or handcuffed and sitting on the curb. And I'm like, that's the problem with this damn gang injunction. It is a legal document that allows cops to harass anybody that's Mexican because they could be in a Mexican gang. And I thought it was bullshit, but he was OK with it. He was Mexican. And the D.A. used him, I think, because he was Mexican to kind of do all the stuff. So when he got heat, he'd have him standing next to him and say, see, I got my, my token Mexican. I already called him token. I go, dude, you're just token Mexican for this fucking gang injunction. No, man, it's good. And, and it, you know, they're out of control. And I mean, look, the gangs in West Sac where they got the injunction, they were pretty bad. I mean, they were cutting and stabbing. There was some pretty serious shit going on. And we definitely need to get a hold of them. But to put the whole damn community to where cops 
don't need any probable cause or anything. If you're freaking Mexican and you're a young male, even a young female with a young male, I can snag you. I can prone you out. I can search you. I don't need probable cause. I don't need shit. I can just ID you, take your picture, say you're in a gang, ask you who you're affiliated with, put you in a gang database because there's a gang injunction. Now, I've kind of oversimplified it. There's a few more steps and there's certain things, but I didn't like it. I thought it was BS and he was okay with it. And he had a little son and I used to tell him, and now his son's in college. And I used to tell him, dude, when your freaking kid gets jacked up because he's Mexican, let's see how much you freaking like it then. Man, that's a, man, most cops aren't going to do that. And we'd drive around and we would see cops. And I pointed out, I said, dude, I said, really? You think those guys, they're freaking kids. I'm like, you think they're in a gang? He goes, oh, man, that's kind of jacked up. He goes, well, I don't cops, though. They're assholes. It's just those cops. That's not the problem. The problem is you don't give people with a bunch of power more freaking power. Never works out good. I thought cops had too much power without that. With that, we got carte blanche to do whatever the hell we want. And Jeff Rising, that crooked-ass DA, he used it. He manipulated it. He pushed it through. He had to serve somebody that he knew wouldn't show up to court so it wouldn't be fought. He didn't want to fight the UCLA because he or the ACLU because he knew he couldn't win. So he had to serve somebody with a warrant in another jurisdiction and said, if you come to fight this, you're going to be arrested. So the guy didn't show up for court. That's that's the kind of dirty shit that Jeff Rizek, the dirty DA, does. And I think he's going to get reelected. But anyway, I digress. All right. Uh, Rick is a raging liberal. His panties are so wet. Uh, really? First of all, I'm going commando. I don't have panties on, so my panties aren't wet. Second of all, if you think I'm a raging liberal, you got issues. Because I don't think there's a whole lot more people more conservative than me. But there may be some, but not a lot. And if you're calling me a liberal, you might be a conspiracy theorist. All right. Saying shit, legal, legion, what? Knife reflexes. You could get Sal on. That'd be fun. Sal, like Sal Maestas, my little guy that used to get in fights all the time with me. I'd love to have Sal on. You guys would be, man, y'all would have a blast if we talked about our fucking... Fuck it! Shut FBI! Damn it! <laughs> Someday I'm gonna get through a fr- I think I did do a live without saying it. I should go back and just cut these out. But it takes too much damn time to find them. Rick already did the video on the stabbing. That stabbing was good though. All right, uh the Red Air Force and our Air Force are training together. My point is that Nancy twice on Navy carriers where they're participating in training. Okay, let, let me tell you guys how this training shit works in the military. When militaries do training exercises, it's not training. It's a buildup of forces for some reason. Either a preemptive planned attack, either a show of force to prevent an attack, It's to get a bunch of people there because they expect something to happen. So if it does happen, you already have your forces there. That's what the military, all militaries in all countries use as training. Team spirit, every year, South Korea, in the winter. Thousands. The the military population doubles on the island of South Korea, or the peninsula. I'm sorry, it's not an island. It's the peninsula, peninsula of South Korea. So... It doubles the military power during team spirit. You have people from Britain, UK, Australia, you name it. Everybody comes there and you have all kind of guns and ammos and planes and parking and structures. And and they call it a big exercise. They're putting a lot of forces there because if North Korea attacks, it's going to be in the winter. That's why they don't do the training exercise in the summer. So when, when this training exercise shit comes out and you people hear that, you need to be thinking that, this is a training exercise. What are they planning for and why are they there? The military doesn't spend millions of dollars with gas and moving troops and transporting and pulling out munitions and security upgrades. And, you know, uh, they, they don't do that for training. OK, they just don't do it. And if someone else wants to back me up or call me full of shit, well, that's OK. We can go there, too. About time you got a haircut. What? I cut my shit a long time ago. I'm, I'm about to, I think I'm going to go with the angry bald look. If I can shave my hair, then it gives me an excuse to go around, just beat the shit out of people and say, it's not my fault. I'm just an angry bald guy. So um, I might have to go to the shave thing if I want to go beat somebody. Not that I would ever encourage violence or do violence because I'm a pretty peaceful guy. 
The FBI is watching. So I'm on a watch list. Rick already did a video on the stabbing. I, I got to talk about the stabbing though a little bit. Uh, have police the lack of character to arrest citizens instead of the injunction. It ain't worse than having police with a lack of character not to arrest. Well, look, when you tell a cop that they can do something legally, most cops are going to be like, if it's legal and that's what they want us to do, then I'll do it. I know you don't like that. Following orders shouldn't just follow orders blindly. I get all that. But when, when our legislator passed laws and we're supposed to be a country of laws, even though we're not, it doesn't apply to half the freaking people. Uh, when the legislator passed laws and gives cops more power, they're going to use it. And it's not just cops. Anytime you give somebody more power, they're going to use it. Remember, if you judge character a man of who has power, and if he has power and he chooses not to use it, that's how you know he's a good character. Okay? I didn't like to go under the color of authority with regular citizens. Criminals, gang members, thugs, pieces of shit, no problem. But regular citizens, I didn't like to pull them over. I didn't like to freaking harass them. I didn't like to ask for ID. I didn't like to impede on them. I didn't want to have contact with them. I don't want government in my life. When I was government, I didn't want to be in good people's lives. So, you know, saying that all cops are bad or they're all going to do that, I, I'm not defending cops. There's a lot of bad cops out there. I mean, I think the cop community is their own worst enemy. They're freaking stupid with their ticket writing bullshit. But whatever. The majority of cops nowadays are pink panty pussies that are afraid to act on their own unless there's 15 of them beating up an unarmed old lady for stealing a freaking pack of gum. And those two got sued, by the way, that did that. But anyway, they can't all be awesome as you, Rick. <laughs> I don't know if I'm awesome. If I'm painting a picture, you know, I had a discussion with this with someone I was talking about, about my Internet persona and how people perceive me. And I think I'm the same person. People that know me, I'm the same person online as ever. I mean, I don't I don't let everybody end up like my really personal side or maybe my sensitive personal side or my romantic relationship side. I don't really get into that a lot. So those, most people don't see that. You see my cop side, my anti-government side, my conservative side, my pro-gun side, things like that. But I'm, when I'm talking like that, I'm not saying I was the perfect cop. I, I made mistakes, I'm sure. And I, I know I got in trouble sometimes when I didn't deserve it. Sometimes I did. Uh, I never crashed a car and hurt anybody. And I was in a lot, a lot of pursuits. I mean, well over 100, not over 300. So I've never crashed. I've only hit one person when I was in a pursuit. And that's because I had to go between telephone pole and, and I was on the sidewalk. And this car in front of me kind of was in the lane. And when I went through, my mirror hit her mirror. And both our mirrors kind of shattered. And I just kept going after the guy I was chasing. And I don't know if she filed a claim. I don't know what happened. I, I never heard about it. But that was the only time that I had an accident chasing somebody. Now, I was chasing somebody and he almost killed somebody. And I felt really bad. The little old lady, he killed her. They had to bring her out backboard. I didn't think she was ever going to walk again. He jumps out after he hits her. We get in a foot pursuit. He's tossing dope. He tossed a gun. We end up catching him. He's going to go to jail. But I'm, I, I look at this lady. I'm like, really? He stole a car. He had a little dope and a gun. And now this woman who wasn't doing anything is going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of her life. She's 80. She's not going to heal right. Was this really worth it? When I was younger, I loved it and I didn't care because you're invincible. But when you reflect on things like that and you see the damage it does, pursuits are bullshit. They're just normally not worth it. And I go back to Illinois. Illinois has a no pursuit policy. And people are like, man, if you didn't chase them, everybody would run and it would be chaos. That's bullshit. There's plenty of agencies that don't chase unless it's a violent felony. They just don't chase. It's not worth it. You know, I, I, so again, I'm not trying to say I'm perfect or awesome. I appreciate a compliment. I, I think I was a good cop. Uh, I, I wish more cops were like me because I think I serve the community the way I'd want to be served. I would want cops like me in my community, but, you know, it is what it is. I just got an email from InfoWars saying <laughs> AJ response from the court ruling. Oh, is it? He probably cussed him out. I don't get those, or I usually delete them. FBI! <sighs> All right. 
wonder if Lay's drinking a martini every time I say FBI because she'll be trashed. <laughs> this is a Jack. I couldn't be drinking a martini like that. What is a martini? That's freaking like straight alcohol, ain't it? Uh, Ricky got sidetracked. What about the stabbing? Oh, thanks for bringing me back online. The stabbing. So this video right here, a lot of people were asking me what knife I like. I did this video. Hang on, let me mute it so I can kind of bump it forward. So this knife right here, I did my review on. Oh, shit. I got to share it. Sorry. <laughs> oh, shit. I just removed it. Damn it. Add to stream. There it is. So this knife right here is, what is it? The Ultimate Knife Review, 599, Fox, Karambit, Black, G10, Fighting Knife, Emerson Wave. Uh, this is my knife that I usually carry when I have jeans on. If I got sweatpants on, I usually don't carry it. I just usually slide my gun in my pocket. Uh, like these shorts here. I went to the gym today. It's got a pocket right here. I just slid my gun in here. Uh, and that's, that's how I usually carry it, uh, my gun. But... If I don't have my gun or if I have my gun on my ankle or something, I'll always have this knife. I got jeans on. I think this is a really good knife because it's got this circle here that. And that was when I had, hey, OK, so this little ring right here is where when you get your finger through it, it doesn't you can't drop it and your hand can't slide down. I told you that guy had finger grips and when he was stabbing a lot of wounds on the person that's stabbing is when he gets bloody his hand slides down on the blade and he can't hold on to it. Sometimes he drops a knife and then you give your opponent a top tuning. This little ring here, I really like because that, that, that keeps my hand in place and I cannot, my hand can't slide down to the blade. Now I think this blade is only maybe three inches. I think the knife that that guy used, the ninja dude in flip flops and socks, I think he had a three inch blade also. Uh, this has what's called the bear claw or the tiger claw, whatever that curved. I kind of like that because when I hold it, it sticks out here. And if I punch you, I can still punch you and fight you off. But I also get free cuts in when I'm punching. So he may think I'm just fighting, but I'm actually getting cuts in or stabs with this while I'm punching. So I really like this knife. I don't get any money. I'm not sponsored. I didn't get any free. I paid full price. I even bitched about the shipping when I bought it. But it is a really, really nice handy knife. The wave is the little hook right here. And when you pull it out of your pocket, if you practice, it opens up automatically. So uh, on that knife incident, the guy did pretty good. He did some good stabs. Some people were saying he died. He did not die unless he just died. When I did the article, I put in the description that he, um, he was in critical condition but was alive. So uh, he, he didn't die. He's alive. If he dies, I'm predicting they're going to charge that guy. Okay. That's my prediction right here. Mark the date, make a copy, whatever. If the guy that he stabbed, when he stabbed him in the neck, he kind of went limp. I thought he damaged the, the spinal cord. I don't know if he did or he didn't, but that knife went straight down in the back and there's a lot of nerves and shit in there. So the way his legs kind of went limp, I figured he was either paralyzed or he cut some nerves or did some damage. If this guy dies, they're going to charge him. Uh, if he's in a wheelchair for the rest of his life, he'll probably get sued. I, I don't think they'll win, but he'll probably get sued. Remember, when you sue somebody, like in Alex Jones' case, you don't have to convince all the jurors that beyond a reasonable doubt. And you don't need, uh, you know, be, uh, above a reasonable uh, belief or preponderance of the I'm sorry, I'm mixing up the words. Preponderance of the evidence for civil trial is tipping the scales. All I have to do is get the scales to go 51-49, and I win. So if they sue him, they've only got to prove 51% that he was wrong, a much lower standard. When they convicted Alex Jones, they didn't have to prove that he was egregious, and this. they just had to tip the scales 51-49 to that he was wrong, and they won, and that's what they did. So, uh, all right. So I, I, I did want to cover this thing. I'll close this thing now because I don't need to do that. Uh, someone else keep me on track. If I get off, please. Uh, let's see here. Does anyone know if his friend was caught? I think his friend was caught. I thought they said they had two people in custody. I didn't see the guy holding the door. People said it was there. 
people put time hacks saying there was a guy holding the door. If he's holding the door and that guy dies, he is charged with felony murder for holding that door. He's involved in a felony, which resulted in a death. He's charged with felony murder. So is the other guy. All three of them are charged. Well, not the guy that dies. He can't be charged. The other two, felony murder. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else am I talking about here? I own an original World War II Carver SAS Perpetrator Dagger. Yeah. K-Bar, I think I called. So would it be better if he dies so he can't testify or higher requirements? Uh, I don't know if it would be better. Uh, dead men tell less lies and it's harder to win when the dead guy can't. You know, if he gets on there, he gets jury appeal. He gets to come in in a wheelchair with the old neck brace and look all sympathetic and he can cry about his life and how he can't play with his freaking dog anymore and he can't have sex and he can't freaking ride his motorcycle, whatever. He gets to cry and play the real victim. If he dies, he can't do that. Other people may say that, but it's not the same as the victim saying it. Uh, new respect for knives. Look, you guys who haven't watched my playlist on knife education, I've got where cops were taught the 21-foot tool rule where – the, the knife expert would actually let a cop walk in in a scenario and he would get his knife out and stab the cop like 10 times before he could get his gun out of the holster. That was the actual training. Video. I've got that posted on the playlist. I've also got several knife attacks on the playlist. So if you, if you don't know much about knives, knives are freaking crazy dangerous. They're called edge weapons. Doesn't have to be a knife. It can be an ax. It can be a, what the hell is this? I forgot what this is called. What is this called? Anybody know? It's that pry bar. It's the. I got any big red truck people here? It's a pry bar, but it's also a hooligan. Never mind. I don't need you big red truck people. Go back and park in a freaking handicap at the grocery store with your big red truck so I can't get in. Anyway, I digress. So this hooligan tool, which I carried in my truck on my car, is an edged weapon. It's not a knife. But if I hit you with this edge, it's doing serious damage. If I hit you with this tip, it's doing serious damage. If I stab you in the back of the neck or in the head or eye with this part, it's doing serious damage. This is a great little weapon. And most cops, if you have it and you say, uh, I was trained with it and it's to break someone out of a car in case I come across an accident. I'm just a helpful, pesky citizen and it's not for protection. Nobody's going to bother you. But if you get in an area and you need to get out of an area, this is a pretty freaking formidable tool. And you do not want to go up to somebody and try to be friends when they're swinging us around. Okay? Pro tip. Right here. So uh, I've had this up here because my leather thing was getting really dry. And I need to oil my saddle and oil this. So um, this little thing was over my blade here. <laughs> all right so how, i don't even know how the hell i got on that oh respect for knives that's what i was talking about don't mess around with edge weapons all right there were three involved yeah and i think they have two in custody and one in the hospital alex jones wasn't found guilty of the judge defaulted oh really that's interesting that's really interesting so the judge ruled against him. He might be able to appeal that. Especially if you guys are saying the judge is a left-wing freaking loon. He hit the fatal T. I don't know if he did hit the fatal T. Uh, I've showed the fatal T on my other lives. If you go to think like a cop. That always freaking scares me. I forgot I have it on. Uh, the fatal T is... Come on, computer, keep up. There it is. So when somebody says he hit the fatal T, if he went right down on his spine and that knife came in here and severed this, this is why he went down like a sack of rocks and he just boom. I don't know if he hit the fatal T because the guy was still talking and I think he just gave up the fight and he just submitted because he was losing blood and panicked. So I think he felt some pain and he knew he was bleeding, but I don't know if he hit the fatal T. 
uh, I would ha I would have to see more on that. If he hit the fatal T, the guy's screwed. Okay, so that's what we're talking about when we talk about the fatal T. Where's Waldo Tatum? I don't know where Tatum. I stopped messing with him because he's he kind of lost all credibility when he's still defending those guys. Can a smoke shop owner file bankruptcy to protect his money? He could have before this incident. The courts will not allow you to do that. If you do that after you're facing exposure, because he killed somebody, he's facing exposure. You can't go, King Zach, I want to protect my shit. Your shit has to be protected before. That's like going out now and saying, hey, man, I need an umbrella policy because I think I'm going to get sued. The insurance company go, you should have had it before. We ain't giving it to you now. If we give it to you now, it's not going to cover what happened before. So uh, this bankruptcy. Now, he could charge up his credit card, spend all his money, hide all his money in cash, sell all his assets, say, I don't have the cash. I'm paying bills. And then you can't get blood out of a turnip. He can do that. Uh, Rick, I think your family of followers know you have a big heart. Really care. We love you. You were so knowledgeable about cop military horse war involvement. Well, thank you. And I think, I, I mean, I, I'm not trying to blow my own horn. I think I'm a pretty good guy. But I do think that some people have a different opinion of me. I absolutely know because I was talking to someone and they were like, uh, they thought I was more of a, I don't know, tough guy, playboy, player, um, maybe just not so much of a nice guy. And I was like, I didn't think I promoted that kind of image. But you know, I talk about my conquest and the crazy girlfriends I had when I was younger, and I was kind of a playboy, and I did get around and have fun when I was younger. But I'm not that guy now. But, you know, because I talk about that, maybe people identify me as that. And I, I just thought it was kind of enlightening that somebody said, you're really a different guy than you show. In a good way. It wasn't a bad way. But they just said I was a different guy. And I was kind of like, really? I thought I was pretty easy to read. But, you know, what? I, mean, I know I got my haters. All the freaking – I had some woman – come on here crying about how I hate women. And maybe if I could get a woman, I wouldn't hate them or some shit. I mean, it's just, I get these freaking crazy hate shit. I agree with you. Like, he went down the last half of neck. Uh, the FBI. Still watching me. <laughs> What's up, Georgia transparency with your American flag, that communist flag. You're going to be on FBI watch list, man. That American flag, that's, that's bad news. You're probably one of those crazy patriot dudes. Yeah, don't bring your neck to a gun. <laughs> Does anyone know if his friend was caught? Yes, I think I already did that. Let me go down to new comments here. Um, smoke shop Johnny definitely went. Dude, it, you know, some people were saying they thought he had knife training. I don't know if he did, but he was stabbing. And when he got hit, he kind of went low hit that hip area, and I, I'm not sure, and I could be wrong, I didn't see a level of training that he was targeting specific things. I saw more of a panic, uh, violence of action, I'm throwing multiple blows, and I'm going to get in as many as I can. I didn't see a lot of targeting. If he was really targeting he should have backhanded right up to the groin, stomach, intestinal area, and that is a great target with a knife. You hit the groin, the PP, or the PP's twig and berries, and you hit that with a knife, most guys are out of the fight, okay? But maybe not. You know, maybe people who are catching monkeypox, they wouldn't be out of the fight. I don't know. Most guys are out of the fight if they take a knife to the twig and berries, okay? So um, that's just my opinion. He's got his lovers. What? And he's got his love. What's his lover? Who are we talking about? Is that a private conversation? Sergeant Tuller was, a, I think, tool drill. Yeah, that was a 21-foot rule, I think they called it. If you're finding a liberal knife. <laughs> I had some liberal here crying. Why were you picking on liberals? It's the conservative. When they say that shit, I always know they're full of shit. Why can't Supreme Court send Capitol Police to drag government attorney generals New York and California. They just shipped a bus from Texas to, I think, New York. And now you know New York's crying, saying we're politicizing the illegals. Really? 
You're not bringing in a million freaking illegals in the last three months. That's not politicizing. You're not having people, 18, 20 people die of heat exhaustion in the back of a truck because you have one more. You're not having women and children getting raped coming across the border. That's not political. No, 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 no. It's only political when Texas moves some of its illegals to New York. Then it's political. Oh, I almost said it. Mother freaking low down, dirty little left wing pieces of shit. Uh I rewatch the Bruce Lee movies. Uh -huh. The FBI. Ha. Ah, damn, that little sucker went down quick. This sucker was pretty full. Woo. Woo. And I made this drink a little strong. So, what? You can't blow yourself, boy. What? What the hell are y'all talking about? Sometimes I get to these comments. I'm like, I thought I was talking about regular shit. And I get to the comments. I'm like, what the? Uh, if there were men like you near me, I'd actually consider dating. <laughs> Damn, somebody's not dating just because of men like me. Well, I think there are men. I think type A guys, military guys, type A, gun people, patriots, conspiracy theorists. I think there's a lot of guys like me. They might not be as sensitive or good looking as me, but you know, you get close. <laughs> Whatever, whatever. I'm only joking, you big crazy people. <laughs> I'm not getting wasted again. I cannot do that. I was, I was pretty freaking toasty. You come off down to earth, call it like you see it. I respect that. Yeah, I do come off, but I, I think uh, maybe I come off as a little tougher than I really am in private. Um, that's kind of the way it was kind of explained to me. I'm not saying I'm a pink panty weasel, but whatever. Two masked guys walked in. Are you pulling out your gun? Are you going to wait? Okay, that's a very good question. I'm glad you asked that. Some people were saying he should be able to shoot them if they come in with a mask because there's no reason. That's that's really a bad philosophy. You can't shoot people unless you articulate why you're in fear. And if you said because they were wearing masks, I was in fear of my life, a jury would find that unreasonable. How do you know they didn't have a disease? How do you know they didn't have an operation that was holding on bandages? How do you know they weren't sun sensitive and the masses to protect them from the sun rays? There's too many options that a defense attorney is going to be able to pull up and you're going to go, no, he had a mask on. He must have been there to rob me. So I shot him and I'm justified. You're going to prison. Okay. I hate to break the news to you and I ain't going to be your pen pal and I ain't putting money on your books. If you want to write me and tell me how I was right, I'll put your letter on the, on the live or something, but you're going to prison. You cannot be shooting people because you just think. Cops do that all the time and they get away with it. But you as a pesky citizen, and I don't think cops ought to be getting away with it. I'm just saying they do, and they do get away with it. But as a pesky citizen, you can't be shooting people for no reason. You have to demonstrate you were in fear either through actions, words, behavior, actions of the aggressor, and it has to be reasonable so when somebody reviews it, they will say you acted reasonably. Deadly force is something that you can't turn back. You can't pull back. It used to be the same way for cops. And over time with immunity and DAs not prosecuting them and everybody playing as all cops are heroes. And if you say something bad about a cop, you must hate cops and you're a bad guy and a cop fucked your fine, screwed your wife or whatever. So shit, the FBI. I am not doing good tonight. I got to quit talking about shit that gets me fired up. <laughs> Jerry Reynolds, what the hell are you doing here? Get the hell out of here, you freaking little left-wing pansy trying to rip off people. <laughs> this is just a guy faking Jerry Reynolds. He's not really Jerry Reynolds. Okay, you were a wild child when you were younger, sowing your wild eggs. I, I, of course, I think all young males do that. That's what they, that young stallions do it in the wild. I mean, that's what we do. It's We want to make our mark. We want to go out on our own, you know, I you know, talking about mothers, they don't want to let go of their sons and they want to baby them. And when boys reach 16, 17, they, they kind of, I don't, I don't need mom smothering me. I'm trying to get my own woman. And now I got mom smothering me and taking care of me and trying to clean my ears and whatever the hell else moms do to their kids now when they want them to stay there for 28 years and don't want them to move out. But guys, I, I mean, it used to be, I mean, don't get me started on my freaking nephews, um, but whatever. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm glad I can pass on some things. That's why I enjoy this. I mean, I I've always been what I consider an educator or teacher. I mean, the military, 
I was an instructor. I taught a lot of things, repelling, guns, tactics. You know, I, I, I was always an instructor. My, my degrees in education, uh, my teaching credentials for colleges in California, lifetime credential. So I am somewhat what I call an educator. So I like passing on knowledge. To me, knowledge without the ability to pass it on, what good is it? I mean, the whole purpose of knowledge is to be able to pass on future generations so it helps others, so it grows, so people can add to it and learn on it. Well, I mean, the people that always thought those were really weak people in the military, usually our supply sergeant. Charlie O'Toole was his name. Really weak dude, insecure, sloppy, not a great military dude. But he was a supply guy, and everybody kissed his ass, and he loved it. And so he would always have the new gadgets and the new toys. And if you wanted it, you had to kiss his ass. And, and all my troops freaking were pissed off at me because I wouldn't kiss his ass. They go, man, if you just go in there and be nice to him, he'll give us the shit, right? Everyone else is getting it. And they're not getting it because you're kind of an asshole to him. I'm not an asshole to him. I'm not kissing his freaking ass. It's his job. So, uh, you know, that. but there's always people that think I know something you don't. Therefore, I'm smarter. I'm better. I don't want to share it because that knowledge is my power. I don't like that. I, I always thought that was a sign of weak character and didn't like it. Uh, where are we at here? Don't hate the player, hate the game. <laughs> oh, shit. Here we go. <laughs> I think it was on the revolution. Let's see if that comes up because that shit was freaking hilarious. Is this it? Oh, my God. It is so freaking funny. You people are going to shit your pants. Well, this is it. Ow. <laughs> okay, so this is the walnut thing that I've been talking about. Oh my God, this is so freaking funny. I laughed my ass off. So let me set the stage here. Uh, hang on, I got to get back to where... So this girl was in Revolution. I thought she was really cute, uh, but she plays a pretty good part. So this guy right here is a Texas Ranger that's retired. And he's retired, so he's got this woman beating him with this whip. <laughs> and these two guys come in that know him, and they're trying to get a favor from him, and he's blindfolded. So they tell her to be quiet. And then they start hitting him with this whip and he starts yelling, Walnut, Walnut, like, stop, you're hitting me too hard. That shit. I hope you guys can hear it on the speakers because this shit is freaking hilarious. series this freaking scene is so damn funny they hit the shit out of him and he's like whoa no what a whoa it hurts <laughs> oh not to mention that this series is a great freaking series uh really great survival scenes great way to survive fighting tribes different ways to poison and kill people Great, great learning. This is probably one of my go-to for learning how to survive after shit is a fan. This one, The Walking Dead. Uh, what's the other one? Um, there's a couple others. But this one is a great, great series. All right. <laughs> that was back in the 70s. Peach might have meant something else. I don't know any of this stuff. I know I didn't know it either. I feel like I'm freaking like clueless where's walnut walnut was a safe word that's why he was yelling it i'm laughing because there's a pineapple juice is safe word didn't that one dude that got arrested use pineapple juice when the cops were arresting him and, and, <laughs> that was a funny video to, these cops he's like yo dude don't do that ow get your hand off my butt ow ow pineapple juice man pineapple juice i was like that shit was a funny arrest. I think I did a video on that if you haven't seen it. I got 713 viewers. Hang on, people. <laughs> Walnut and pineapple juice. What is the show? The show is called The Revolution. And it's a series. It's got two seasons. Great, great, good plot. Really cool shit. Uh, these little nanites that they make 
take all the electricity. So nobody has electricity, but there's a couple things that allow you to have electricity. So everybody's fighting with swords. They don't have guns and money. Years have gone by and now they're starting to get electricity back and the whole world is changing. Really, really great series. I love that show. Uh, I loved it too. Lee's loving everything. <laughs> Lee's must be drunk. <laughs> She's like, love this and love that. <laughs> <laughs> holy shit let me show you what i just got a text no i can't show you this text <laughs> holy shit somebody's watching me and uh sending me texts just say no <laughs> hello from pakistan all right pakistani the, the dude from Pakistan on a uh, Seinfeld that opened a restaurant, he's like, you're very, very bad man. You're bad man, Jerry. He had a big, long finger when he did bad man. <laughs> oh, shit. I wanted to talk about nudie booty. Oh, Y'all want to see booty again? Okay, let's do a test. What is this? <laughs> There's a test. I got to make sure. See, when you're teaching, you always have to tell people what you're going to teach them. Then you teach them. Then you tell them what you taught them. And then you give them a test to see if they retained it. So that was your test, people. Hey, I got people paying attention. You go, pesky citizen. D, somebody's paying attention. <laughs> Rick's learning channel. <laughs> I can be like the wild kingdom, the sex wild kingdom. And the bed today is the jungle with the tall weeds and the grass. And the male species has to work his way through the tall grass <laughs> to find his prey. <laughs> Welcome to Rick's sex wild kingdom. <laughs> oh, shit. See, I don't have to get drunk to be all stupid. You people thought I was stupid just because I was drunk. I don't have to be drunk to be stupid. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, where are we at? Welcome to the jungle, baby. Hey, in there, wasn't there a good song? Judy, or not Judy. <laughs> Alexa, play Jungle Love. Wasn't there a song, Jungle something? Playing Jungle Love. For over 90 million songs on demand, yeah, yeah, say yeah. try Amazon Music Unlimited. <laughs> I'm having trouble hearing. Can you say that again? Woman, I told you to be quiet. I'm going to knock the... You open your mouth again. Damn, woman. Sorry, I don't know that. Shit! I thought she was on the pill. <laughs> How was I to know she could get pregnant? Amazon didn't put that in a warning. <laughs> Jones, I get rid of that. Uh, this is an update on the Rust investigation. Alexa, stop. If I got to tell you again, I'm going to beat you like a redhead stepchild. That's it. Alexa, stop. Okay. On the Rust investigation, they're kind of, I've covered a lot of topics on this for those that want to get back to the news and shit. Uh, they're still waiting on some stuff from the FBI, supposedly, and they haven't. Uh, <laughs> Alexa or Elizabeth. I just called Elizabeth Alexa. Stop giving me money. Damn it. <laughs> hmm, I don't know that one. Now Alexa's talking about Don't talk back to me, woman. <laughs> Thanks, Elizabeth. All right. So uh, on the Rust investigation, the DA just announced today, which kind of tells me they're not going to charge them. They said they're still waiting on information. They said they have not got the report in this video of, from the police department or the sheriff's department yet. And that's why they're waiting to review it. This case has been going on for a year and they haven't reviewed shit. That doesn't normally happen. When somebody, when an incident like this happens and somebody dies, there are reports that are turned over to the DA's office and they may do more reports. They may say it's continuing investigation. But for the DA to say that we haven't received any reports, I call bullshit. So it sounds like the DA doesn't want to charge. They're stonewalling. They're seeing if it'll go longer so it'll go under the radar. 
I'm thinking they're not going to charge him, which is really kind of shocking. They're saying they're still waiting on the ballistics for the gun to come back. Ballistics doesn't change much. I mean, you don't need the ballistics to charge him. You can charge him now if you think he did something wrong. Ballistics isn't going to change whether or not what he did was negligent or grossly negligent or gross homicide, whatever it is. Whatever they want to charge him with, they don't need the ballistics back. So I don't think the DA is going to charge Alex Baldwin, which I think is kind of bullshit, but I wasn't there, so I don't really know all the facts. Uh, the Batmobile case, uh, supposedly the DA in this video right here, if you want to watch it, they interviewed the DA and the DA said, look, we're not, we're not pursuing this till we get more info. It's a civil matter. So the difference between civil and criminal in this case is if I defraud you of money and you pay me something in return for services or an object and I don't deliver, that's fraud. It becomes criminal. Now, it can be a civil case. But depending on the dollar amount and how I defrauded you, et cetera, can make it criminal. The DA gets to decide. For some reason, the DA got involved in this case, even though the assistant DA was going to charge, the DA said, we're not sure we're going to charge that. We need more information. So they had the guy that's building the Batmobile scheduled for an arraignment. An arraignment is where you are formally charged. It says you show up to court. You're being charged with grand theft, falsifying funds, whatever, fraud. And then you plead not guilty, and then they set a court date. That's what the arraignment is, and they decide whether you get bail or not. And they give you bail, you post bail, and you leave. So the DA canceled the arraignment for this guy, which tells me that the assistant DA got the search warrant, thought there was probable cause to charge him, charged him. Now the DA started getting heat. The DA looked at it and went, we may just push this back to the civil. I don't know if we want to get involved in this. So the DA kind of slammed the sheriff's department saying, we've never seen a case like this where they did that. I don't know if that's true. A lot of people are telling me I got it wrong. It's not, I mean, look, I've seen plenty of cases that are civil and they turn into criminal. And I've seen criminal cases that the DA goes, let it be civil. There was a case I was working guy had his place burnt down. It was arson. We knew it was arson. The investigator fucked up. Shit. Screwed up the case. And so the DA called me in and goes, dude, nobody wants to work this case. This guy's doing this, et cetera. I need you to work this case. You got unlimited overtime. Work this case and see if you can solve it. I go, okay. So I start doing the case on this arson. And I'm getting hints that it's his freaking son. And nobody's interviewed his son. Nobody's done anything with his son. But his son, a couple of employees that I re-interviewed said, yeah, his son was working that day, but, you know, he had a phone out with his dad and he fired him. I went, really? Dad fires son and then his place gets burnt down? That's a coincidence. I call that a clue. So I really started focusing on his son. I started tracking down his timeline, all the shit. I got him in for a polygraph, a voice stress analyzer test, and he failed it miserably. And so I put my case together and I said, his son did it. I, it's, it's all the facts are here. He was working. He was there. He can't account first place that night. He was pissed off at his dad. His questions are not consistent. His, his son did it. I gave that info to the DA. The DA didn't want to charge him. The DA called his dad because he, this is Jeff Reisick. This is when I was working with Jeff Reisick, cook a DA. He calls the dad up. And his dad was bitching at him because they were buddies. Nobody's investigating my case. So the DA assigned me unlimited overtime, worked the case. I worked the case. And I don't think I, I mean, I might've got maybe 30, 40 hours overtime, whatever. It wasn't that big of a deal. But I worked the case. I, I pretty much solved it. His son did it. And when I gave it to the DA, the DA called the guy back, said, hey, you want us to investigate? We investigated. Your son did it. Do you want us to prosecute? And the dad goes, no. So all that money that was spent and everything, the DA, even though we had a crime, we had arson, I proved it. I, we had more than probable cause. I could have arrested him. The DA said, let it go. We're dropping it. It's a civil. We'll let the insurance and those guys figure it out. So I, I was kind of like, what the? So this isn't new to me that a DA can go, maybe I'll charge it. Maybe I won't. If I like you, if you donate money. I'm telling you, DAs are the most powerful people in government, and they are totally unaccountable. 
and they have total discretion on whether or not they want to, you know, you can literally shoot a guy in main square downtown city in front of a hundred witnesses and the DA can go, I ain't filing. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Now the attorney general can come in and maybe file, but they usually don't do that because it gets political. So in this case, people are saying the sheriff went out there, the Batman old guy, the DA. Oh yeah. By the way, the DA did say, well, we really didn't know anything about this case. And I, as soon as they said that in this interview, I went, you're full of shit because the DA approved search warrants. And if the sheriff's department got a search warrant signed by a judge, the judge asked, did the DA approve this? Because the DA's got to defend that warrant. And so the DA did sign off on that warrant, not him, but one of his deputies. So when, when a DA signs off on a warrant, they read it. They go, I agree. I think you have good probable cause. I think I can defend this warrant. Go search and get your shit. Go get the judge to sign it. So the DA approves a warrant, says you have enough to go get a warrant. Then when they go serve the warrant and actually find evidence, another DA files charges. And now the head DA says, uh, I'm not sure we're going to charge him. We're canceling the arraignment. So this case has a lot of moving parts. I know a lot of people are like, you're wrong, Rick. You don't know what you're talking about. That, that's just the way politics work out. Okay. That little inside on how the DAs work. Uh, the rust investigations, potential charges. I don't think they're charging him. It's bullshit. Uh, I did Bitcoin already. Top stories today. The Democrats are passing this freaking 500 billion million freaking gazillion dollar bill. And they're saying it's going to help inflation. Are you freaking? I know my viewers know it, but maybe I'll have some left wing drive by come here and accidentally click on this video and might learn something with his two freaking brain cells. Inflation is caused by government dumping money, printing money, and spending too much money that they don't freaking have. That's why we're running a trillion dollar deficit. That's why inflation is hitting. That's why you're paying twice as much at the gas pumps and for your food, for everything you're buying, your electricity. Everything is going because government spends money they don't have. The freaking left now passes a freaking umpteen billion dollar bill saying this will help inflation. You got idiots cheering. And all the Democrats are voting for it. I freaking hate the left wing pieces of shit. They destroy everything they're touched on like a freaking cancer. And they just eat away at the host until the host is destroyed. And America is the freaking host. And the liberals are feeding on us. And nobody's fighting back and trying to kill the damn virus. Not that killing means violence. I would never promote violence. But I'm talking about get rid of the virus somehow. Anyway, uh, what the hell else I've got? And I already did the walnut thing. Okay. So shit, we need to finish this up with a couple songs uh, and we'll call it. How about uh, Alexa? Play Should Have Been a Cowboy. I like that song. Here's Should Have Been a Cowboy by Toby Keith on Amazon Music. Yeah, I should have been a cowboy. I should have been a cowboy. Good night, gun people.